What's going on guys? It's your boy Distant Coder and welcome back to another episode of Know Your Rulings. Now you may have noticed that I've changed up the name of the series. I just felt like Know Your Rulings rolled off the tongue a bit better than answering your ruling questions, but the premise of the series does not change. We are still going over your comments in the comment section below and we're still reading your ruling questions and answering them for you guys. So don't forget that if you guys do want to take part in the series, you can leave your ruling question in the comment section of this video and I'll go over those for the rulings for the next video. So without further ado, let's get into the rulings. All right, so this very first ruling question comes to us from Zokan and they ask, Hey Coder, if my opponent has two Balings in the graveyard and I activate Called by the Grave to banish one, can the other still protect the Salamangrate cards from destruction? So with the effect of Called by the Grave, you can banish a monster from your opponent's graveyard and then it'll negate the activated effects of monsters with that same name. Now, when you consider the effect of Balings in the graveyard, to protect a Salamangre card from being destroyed, that is not an activated effect. It simply replaces the destruction. So because this isn't an activated effect, the effect of that second Bailings in the Grave to protect will not be negated by Called by the Grave. So even if you Called by the Grave one Bailings and your opponent has another in the graveyard, they'll still be able to use that Bailings to protect any Salamangre cards that they have, and it will successfully protect them. All right, so this next ruling question comes to us from Abdel Rahman, and they ask, Hey Coder, if I use a Salad Monster to link into an Almirage, can this trigger both Gazelle and Parallel Exceed in hand? So, this is a very interesting ruling that does come up a lot now with the recent unban of Mirage Stalio. Uh, basically, in, in Salamangrate, you oftentimes will have this interaction where you link summon for a Bailings using a Salamangrate monster or an Almirage or something like that, and you have the situation where you have both Gazelle and Parallel Exceed in hand, which both meet their trigger requirements at the same time. In this case, Due to an old ruling uh, for this one card named Green Baboon, Konami have made a rule that you are not allowed to activate a trigger effect that special summons itself from the hand multiple times in a chain. Basically what this means is you cannot use in the same chain the hand effect to summon from Gazelle as well as the hand effect to summon from Parallel Exceed. You're only allowed to have one effect that is a trigger effect that can special summon the monster from the hand in any given chain. Now, the interesting thing with this as well that also comes up in Salad sometimes is sometimes you'll have a Gazelle in hand that meets its trigger at the same time as a Sea Archiver in the graveyard. This same rule applies. You would not be allowed to activate the Gazelle or the uh, and the Archiver in the same chain, I should say, for the very simple reason that the Archiver can summon itself from hand or graveyard. So because the Archiver, even though it's in graveyard, has the effect that it can special summon itself from the hand as a trigger effect, you cannot put that effect of Sea Archiver in the same chain that you would put the effect of Salamangre Gazelle. So this is a really weird interaction uh, that happened because back in the day when Green Baboon was a decent card, uh, people would sometimes have two Green Baboons in hand and would trigger both of them to summon in the same chain and Konami have made a rule uh, due to that ruling. They've decided to make it an official rule that you can't have two trigger effects that would special summon from the hand in the same chain. All right, so this next ruling question comes to us from Daffle and they ask, if I have a virtual world QB Shen Shen on the field, can I use gravity collapse to negate an opponent's summon by sending the Shen Shen to the graveyard? So what gravity collapse does is it can negate an opponent's summon by sending a synchro monster you control to the graveyard. Now, under Shen Shen, all cards sent from the field to the graveyard are banished instead. Now, we all know that if the Shen Shen would leave the field, it'll simply go to the graveyard because its effect stops applying when it leaves the field, but before it hits the graveyard, so it'll still go to the grave. However, you are not legally allowed to activate Gravity Collapse while Shen Shen is on the field because the game does not recognize that when you would send your Shen Shen to the graveyard, uh, it will be sent to the graveyard and Gravity Collapse will, would successfully be able to pay its cost. So unfortunately, under Shen Shen, you're not allowed to activate Gravity Collapse because the game still thinks that any Synchro monster you're going to send from the field to the graveyard is going to be banished via the effect of Shen Shen. So this is kind of one of those situations where you have two conflicting effects, and here you're not allowed to activate the Gravity Collapse under Shen Shen. All right, this next ruling question comes to us from Junior Daniels, and they ask, so I nib my opponent, then I chain Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine to summon Golden Boy. Does nib stay in hand, and can it be reused or no? So, in any 
given situation where you activate the effect of the Biru and then later in that chain, use an effect that locks you into a certain type of monster so that your Nibiru is no longer a legal summon. Basically how this inter uh, interaction will go down, uh, be it Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, be it an Orcus Monster's Grave effect, the way this interaction works is that you'll resolve whatever effect locks you into a certain type of monster, and then when the Nibiru would resolve, even though it's not able to special summon itself anymore, it will still attempt to resolve its effect as much as possible. So because Nibiru says, tribute all face-up monsters on the field, and if you do special summon this card, Nibiru will still tribute all monsters on the field, but then then the Nibiru will stay in hand because it cannot legally special summon itself, but the effect has already been used and it is a once per turn effect, so you won't be able to reuse the Nibiru in that same turn. So effectively, if you Nibiru chain Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, you'll get to like summon a Lord and then the Nibiru will wipe the field, but no monsters will be summoned, no token will be summoned, you'll keep the Nibiru in hand and you cannot use the Nibiru again that turn. All right, this next ruling question comes to us from Olive Ascalane and they ask, ruling question, how does Dark Law interact with cards that send guards to the graveyard as cost or as an effect? Do their effects work slash can you activate them? So uh, this is like a two-part question because the answer is different for both of those. Under Dark Law, all cards your opponent sends to the graveyard are banished instead. Now, if you consider a card that sends a card to the graveyard for cost, such as Signet Mining, for example, you're not legally allowed to activate Signet Mining under uh, the effect of Dark Law because the Signet Mining cannot successfully pay its cost. And when it comes to costs, costs need to be paid exactly per the card tech. So if there's a card preventing you from sending something to the graveyard, it'll get banished instead or something like that. You're not allowed to activate something like Sign Up Mining that sends a card from hand specifically to the graveyard for cost. Now, this is different when you consider cards that send cards to the graveyard for effect, such as Foolish Burial. Under Dark Law, you're completely allowed to activate Foolish Burial, and all that'll happen is whatever monster you decide to send to the graveyard will simply be banished instead. Interactions like these can come up in something like dinosaurs under dark law you can like normal and ovi raptor and use the effect to send from deck to grave and you can send something like a giant rex which will get banished and will summon itself and then you have access to a rank four so you can kind of play around it so just remember costs need to be paid exactly per the card text but under dark law you are allowed to activate effects that send a card from the to the graveyard for effect and not for cost all right this next only question comes to us from miss back and they ask how does meteonis drytron interact with ritual monsters with zero attack like Relinquished or the newly announced Sonic Bird Ritual Monster. So, in the case of ritual spells as a whole, there is a rule known as the Pebble Rule from Konami that you are not allowed to overpay, well, excessively overpay, I should say, for the ritual summon of ritual monsters. So, say for example, you activate a ritual spell that says that you have to tribute levels that are equal to or higher than the level of the ritual monster you're attempting to ritual summon. Um, you are, say for example, you're trying to ritual summon a level 8. You are allowed to tribute, for example, a level 4 and a level 5. In that case, yes, you are overpaying, but you are legally overpaying. Where you are not allowed to overpay is, for example, you can't use a level 3, a level 4, and a level 5 to make a, uh, a level 8 ritual monster and use the pretense saying, oh, well, I tribute the 3 first and then the 4, so that's 7, and then the 5. Because you would legally be allowed to ritual summon that monster using just a level 4 and a level 5 or a level 3 and a level 5. So in this situation, you have to use whatever combination uses the least amount of monsters and you don't get to pick and choose like what order you want to tribute the monsters in. You tribute them all at once and you're not allowed to excessively overpay. So now back to the question at hand. With Meteonis Drychon, you're tributing monsters that have a specific attack or higher. Now in the case of monsters with zero attack, technically you've already paid the full cost. As soon as you pay any sort of additional attack, then at that point you are overpaying for the ritual cost of the ritual monster you're attempting to ritual summon. Now, when it comes to a zero attack monster, you literally cannot tribute anything because the second you tribute one monster, you're overpaying because a monster with zero attack already has its entire ritual cost already paid. So what this means is that with Meteonis Drytron, there is no circumstance in the game. Even if you're trying to tribute a, a, a zero attack monster, there's no situation in the game where you would legally be allowed to ritual summon a zero attack ritual monster via the effect of Meteor's Tritron. 
So anyways, guys, that was it for this episode of Know Your Rulings. I hope you guys like the new series name. Uh, don't worry, the series is going to remain the same as you saw in this video. Same thing as what you're normally used to. And as usual, don't forget to leave your ruling questions in the comment section of this video so I can go over those for my next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!